Pizza is often considered the holy grail of gluten-free baking, and for good reason. Few other foods rely so heavily on gluten for their structure and texture. What exactly is gluten? Well, when wheat flour is combined with water, two separate proteins, glutenin and gliadin, bond together to form gluten. Gluten is stretchy and elastic, which gives it the ability to trap gas and provide lift. It's this stretchy quality that also gives foods like pizza their characteristic chew. So what happens when you try to make pizza dough without gluten? Generally speaking, the results are pretty terrible. With very little ability to trap gas, the dough bakes into a crust that is dense, super thin, and cracker-like, with almost no satisfying chew at all. Now the problem with most gluten-free pizza recipes is that they try to simply replace all-purpose flour with a gluten-free flour blend, which is made up of various flours and starches, and then just call it a day. In reality, that's simply step one in the process. In order to create a structural network in a dough that can expand around the gases produced during fermentation, you need to include some sort of binder. Now binders strengthen the protein network in baked goods, which increases their elasticity. Without one, the result will be dense and squat because the carbon dioxide simply passes through the dough and escapes into the air. While we use xanthan gum as a binder in many low moisture gluten-free baked goods, such as cookies and muffins, we found that psyllium husk works best with high moisture breads and pizza. And the reason is that psyllium is especially effective at binding water and strengthening the protein network. It also provides an earthy flavor that tastes pretty weedy. The next step is to add more leavening in the form of baking powder. Now baking powder may sound like a strange addition to a yeasted dough, but it plays an important role here. So think of it this way, even with the addition of a binder, gluten-free dough will never be able to trap the same quantity of gas that a traditional dough can. Much of it escapes through the dough into the air. So to compensate for this loss, we need to produce even more gas. Baking powder gives an initial burst of leavening when it's first mixed into the dough, but then also produces more gas in the heat of the oven. Gluten-free flours don't brown and crisp nearly as well as wheat flour does, thanks to their lower protein content. Now to make up for this deficit, we add an unusual ingredient, almond flour. Almond flour provides a good source of both fat and protein to help the crust brown and crisp, and yet it's mild enough in flavor to really go completely undetected. The final step is to add water, a lot of water. Take a look at these two pizza doughs. This is our traditional thin crust pizza dough, which is 68% hydrated. That means for every 100 grams of flour, we use 68 grams of water. This ratio gives us an easy to handle dough with great gluten development. This one is our gluten-free pizza dough, which contains nearly twice as much water. That means it's not even technically a dough, but rather a batter. Why so much extra water? Well, it turns out that different plant starches absorb water, swell, and gel to different degrees and at different temperatures. If a starch isn't fully hydrated, it can leave a gritty, starchy feeling on your tongue. The starches in most gluten-free blends require lots of water in order to rid them of this bad texture. After proofing and shaping our super wet dough, we par-bake it for 45 minutes in a low oven to drive off that excess water and set the starches. We then let it cool before topping and crisping on a hot pizza stone. Does that seem like a lot of work? Well, it is, but is it worth it? Let's check out the final product. The bottom crust is crispy and brown. The interior is airy and light with a satisfying chew. This isn't just good gluten-free pizza, this is good pizza. This is the science of good cooking.